Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to His Excellency Bishop Bambera, members of the board, distinguished guests, students, staff, and faculty. I am Hal Bailey, the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at the University. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the inauguration of the 25th President of the University of Scranton, the Reverend Kevin P. Quinn of the Society of Jesus. Please remain standing for the offering of the invocation by Rab Rabbi Joseph Mendelssohn of Temple Israel and president of the Scranton Area Ministerium. Following the invocation, please remain standing and join the university choir in singing the national anthem. Rabbi Mendelssohn. Thank you, Al. Reverend Quinn, had to find him. I have a question for you. Out of all these beautiful purple robes, why'd you choose the Jewish boy to deliver the invocation? <laughs> of course, Jesus was Jewish, but... <laughs> Just to forestall any other statements, uh, we are claiming as a group this beautiful day. Uh, it is my pleasure as a fourth generation Californian to welcome you to Scranton. As president of the Scranton Area Ministerium, I am the representative of the Scranton's, Greater Scranton's religious community, and we offer you the Fellowship of Scranton Area's clergy. As rabbi of Temple Israel, I am the representative of the Jewish community welcoming you to Scranton. We have a lot in common Aside from this little theological difference, education is an extremely high priority for all of us. Teaching our younger adults, whether it be trade, moral and ethical values, the importance of giving back to community. We share the value of community, whether it is the responsibility to ourselves as being part of a community, whether it's giving back to community. Community is what binds us. It's what really makes us as a Scranton area unique because many people decide to stay when they thought they would leave. And when we ask why, it's community. Our differences make us unique. Our commonalities meld us into a civic organization that works together to improve Scranton and the Lackawanna County for all of us. As a representative of the Scranton community, I've participated in this community for over seven years, and it will be very hard for my wife and me to leave next year because you are all wonderful people. You've made us feel welcome and we hope that you are also made to feel as welcome as we have been. Many step forward to help at all times, but there are many more that are still in need. And University of Scranton has made a real difference in our community, stepping forward to make a positive difference in the appearance, in the health, in the welfare of our community. You have come to this university as president, as leader in Scranton, and your challenge will be to lead the University of Scranton, not only as an educational institution, but also as a valuable member of the community. And so we pray. Almighty Spirit who guides our lives, we thank you for providing us with Reverend Quinn. We are your tools who will give him the knowledge he needs about the university, about Scranton, about our people. We are your servants who will work with him 
support the university as the university supports us. Please, God, help Reverend Quinn. Give him the capacity to learn all we have to share. Give him the strength to carry the load we have to share. And give him a sense of humor and common sense to keep everything in perspective as so much goes so fast in so little time. And we thank you. As we thank you, we ask you to strengthen us all with your love. Help us to combine our faith and daily efforts to make our great and Scranton community a place where all can learn, work, and live in peace and safety. And in doing so, we can serve you with all our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Rabbi Mendelssohn, for your openness, your wisdom, and your graceful appeal for divine support for our deeply shared mission. I am sure your prayers will redound greatly to the benefit of the university, the community, and Father Quinn. I would also like to thank you, our audience, for offering us your presence as we inaugurate a new president. We are both honored and humbled by your enthusiasm and by your support for this new era at the University of Scranton. There are numerous citations on display in the back of this venue. There are delegates from over 100 colleges and universities from across the country. There are many public dignitaries and friends of the university. And there are students, staff, and faculty. You have come from without and come from within to welcome and encourage a man who, at least those of you of a certain age, may recognize as the mighty Quinn, <laughs> of whom you've not seen nothing like, <laughs> and whom we are very happy to now claim as ours. So, welcome to you all. Thank you for coming. And welcome and good luck to Father Quinn the Mighty. I will now invite distinguished individuals representing a variety of constituencies to offer greetings and well wishes for Father Quinn. First, it is my privilege to welcome the Most Reverend Joseph C. Bambera, Doctor of Divinity, the 10th Bishop of Scranton, who will offer a greeting on behalf of the Diocese of Scranton. Bishop Bambera. Good morning. 123 years ago, the first bishop of the Diocese of Scranton, William G. O'Hara, had a vision of providing Catholic education for the people of his diocese, and in particular, Catholic higher education. 
That vision turned into a reality in 1888 with the dedication of St. Thomas College, a college that today we refer to as the University of Scranton. While the University of Scranton has grown and flourished since its earliest days, and particularly since 1942, when the Diocese of Scranton entrusted its care to members of the Society of Jesus. At its core, the University of Scranton continues to fulfill the vision of Bishop O'Hara. In its mission statement, the University of Scranton sees itself as a Catholic and Jesuit university animated by the spiritual vision and the tradition of excellence characteristic of the Society of Jesus and those who share its way of proceeding. Father Quinn, we see the University of Scranton in the same way that it was as seen itself, grounded in a deep belief in God and a profound respect for the human person, committed to the pursuit of knowledge, determined to promote justice, dedicated to the gospel value of servant leadership. In the short time that you have been among us, you have given us every reason to believe that you too see the University of Scranton in just the same way. We pray that your tenure as the 25th president of this great university will be long and fruitful and that it will provide you with a personal sense of fulfillment and meaning. We pray as well that you will be given the wisdom and courage to build upon the rich Catholic and Jesuit tradition entrusted to your care this day, and so continue to create a learning environment preparing students who, in the words of St. Ignatius, will set the world on fire. Father Quinn, welcome to the Church of Scranton. We are blessed by your willingness to serve and blessed indeed by the University of Scranton. Thank you, Bishop Bambera. The Honorable John Blake, State Senator from the 22nd Senatorial District of Pennsylvania, will offer a greeting on behalf of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Senator Blake. Members of the Board of Trustees, Father Quinn, Excellency, Excellency Bishop Bambera, Reverend clergy and religious, university management, faculty, staff, of course students, distinguished guests and friends all. It is a deep honor and a pleasure for me to join in this celebration, the inauguration of the 25th president of the University of Scranton. Kevin, welcome. Congratulations and all best wishes as you take on the leadership of this extraordinary institution of higher learning. I also want to take this opportunity to express deep thanks to Father Scott Pilars for his service to the university and for the legacy of, achieve of achievement he leaves behind. Thank you, Scott. I had the pleasure of meeting Father Quinn earlier this summer, not long after his arrival here in Scranton. And I also had the distinct pleasure of joining him for dinner a few weeks back, and it was indeed a distinct pleasure. I believe Kevin's dad was a firefighter in New York City for 25 years. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell him that there's a wonderful fraternity of firefighters right here in Scranton. They'll be helpful in any crisis situation, but particularly if you get a call from city council at around budget time. <laughs> I was also glad that here to hear that Father Quinn enjoys a round of golf from time to time. He'll be delighted to find many beautiful, challenging, and well-groomed courses, all in very close proximity to his campus. I look forward to an opportunity to join him for a round or two, but what I've heard of his Jesuit work ethic, I don't know that he'll find the time, but I hope he will. There's another quality about Father Quinn that was apparent immediately upon meeting him. Perhaps it comes from his scholarship in the law or perhaps the stories from Father Pilar's, but in any case, he was very inquisitive about his new home and about the people of Scranton. A lot of questions, a lot of inquiries. Tell me about local politics. What do you, why do you think that's so? What do you think the people of Scranton think about that? Tell me about the business community. Where do I go to see that? How do I get to Carbondale? Oh no, that was, that was a different Quinn. 
But seriously, and perhaps not surprising, as someone new to the community, Kevin was very inquisitive. I conclude, of course, he wants to know as much as he can as quickly as possible. He wants to dig in and get his arms around this community, learn the language, oh my goodness, learn the language of this community. It's not anything he's heard in Long Island or in Santa Clara. <clears throat> he wants to get off to a good start and truly understand the people of Scranton. And Kevin, as a senator, I've got one thing to say. When you figure it out, give me a call. <laughs> Seriously, Father Quinn, I know what you'll find here. You'll find a loving, caring, giving, proud, loyal, resilient, and dependable people who want nothing more than for you to succeed. You'll find Majus, the restless pursuit of excellence grounded in gratitude and the true Jesuit tradition. You'll find a deep appreciation for the blessings bestowed upon us, and indeed, your joining this community is another blessing. You'll find a respect for tradition that continues to inspire our future, and perhaps most importantly, you'll find friendship that will last a lifetime. On behalf of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania State Senate, Northeastern Pennsylvania, and the entire University of Scranton community, welcome, congratulations, and best wishes. We are fortunate to have you. Thank you, Senator Blake. The Honorable Christopher Doherty, Mayor of Scranton, will now offer a greeting on behalf of the city of Scranton. Mayor Doherty. Father Quinn, welcome. Good morning, everyone. Father Byron, welcome back. And to Father McShane and Father Pilars, welcome back. Uh, it is great to have you here. If you look at the change at this campus, just from the time of Father Byron till today, all the things that have taken place and how this school has changed. I know, Father, you're going to do a great job. The legacy that has been left here by the men who have served before you have done a tremendous job in changing this university and changing our city. On behalf of the people of Scranton, you have my pledge that we will work with you to make sure that the University of Scranton grows even farther and higher and becomes the most successful Jesuit college in the nation. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you, Mayor Doherty, and, and I'm sure we share your ambitions for the institution. As Senator Blake might say, Haina or no? <laughs> Sister Ann Munley of the Sisters and Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, President of Marywood University, will now offer a greeting on behalf of Northeastern Pennsylvania Colleges. Sister Munley. Good afternoon. I'm so pleased to offer greetings on behalf of all of the Northeast Pennsylvania College and University Presidents. We gather on this very special day to congratulate and recognize Reverend Kevin P. Quinn, SJ, as he officially assumes his role as the 25th President of the University of Scranton. As an accomplished administrator, distinguished law professor, and recognized scholar with a deep commitment to Catholic and Jesuit higher education, Father Quinn understands well the interdependent synergy of ethics, education, and empowerment that, take, that it takes to lead a successful, mission-driven institution. Yet no one understands the role of a college or university president more than those who serve in this capacity. To that end, for all of my colleagues, I offer some simple insights to Father Quinn at this wonderful time of new beginnings. There will be times in which you will be challenged and stretched. There will be times as well when you will experience the exhilaration of achievement. In all of these moments, stay in touch with your inner strength and keep before you awareness of the power of your personal integrity, and above all, hang on to your dreams. Harriet Tubman, the great African-American abolitionist and humanitarian, is quoted as saying, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember that you have within you the strength 
the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and to change the world. Her dream of freedom was the start, and she certainly played a key role in changing the world that she had known. So Father Quinn, on this great day, we look to you confident that you will indeed pursue with great passion the kind of initiatives that will advance the mission of the University of Scranton and contribute richly to the surrounding community and well beyond. Enjoy bountiful blessings and many successes in your new role as president of the University of Scranton, confident in the knowledge that you have our goodwill and support as you lead this fine university forward with pride, passion, and promise. Today, I'm delighted to bring the color green into the sea of purple. <laughs> and so as in the Celtic tradition of your forebears, I wish you, Father Quinn, deep peace of the shining stars to you and deep peace of the sun of peace. Thank you, Sister Munley. Our next presenter offers a slight variation on our carefully scripted pattern. A graduate of the class of 2006 with an honorary doctorate, a gentleman we are proud to call our own, Dr. Wycliffe Gordon will present an original greeting on behalf of all those musically inclined. Dr. Gordon.
Dr. Gordon, thank you for a great piece and your typically fabulous playing. I would also throw in a, 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 a bouquet to the band and to Cheryl Boga. They They, they learned that music this morning, as I understand it. So, so uh, we put things together, but you know, on time, just, just in time inaugurations. Uh, our next presenter will be Mr. John Lanahan of the class of 1984 and president of the Alumni Society. And he will offer a greeting on behalf of all our alumni, Mr. Lanahan. Good afternoon. On this landmark day in the university's history, it is a great honor and privilege to stand here before you and bring greetings and best wishes on behalf of the more than 44,000 Scranton graduates of the University of Scranton. Many fellow alumni join me today. Some are faculty, staff, and trustees. Some processed into this room as alumni delegates. Some are here with their sons and daughters as parents of current students and others are seated with friends and family as part of the audience. Regardless of where life has taken us since graduating from the University of Scranton, all of us share one common thread, the love and dedication we hold in our hearts for this special place. We cherish our role as lifelong members of the university community, and we take great pride in that trust instilled in all of us to do great things in Scranton's name. Simply stated, we embrace the challenge of St. Ignatius and the university to set the world on fire. As alumni, we do our best to fulfill that trust and satisfy that challenge with unrelenting support for our alma mater. We volunteer our time, offer philanthropic support, and share this grand story with our friends and neighbors in order to keep our legacy strong. We take these extra steps because we care, and because our Jesuit education taught us to give and not to count the cost. It was that education, that invaluable learning experience, that made us the men and women we are today. And we challenge the leadership of this university to continue that tradition for current and future generations of Scranton students. So now we look to our new leader, the 25th president of the University of Scranton, and on behalf of all Scranton alumni today and in the years to come, I pledge our unwavering service, support, and confidence as I offer a heartfelt welcome and deepest congratulations to you, the Reverend Kevin P. Quinn of the Society of Jesus. Thank you, Mr. Lanahan. I just made a crack about the band learning its role this morning and the uh, uh, just-in-time inauguration, uh, but I was a victim of my own crack, actually, uh, because I skipped the next presenter, and I'd like, to, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to correct that immediately with my apologies. Uh, the next presenter now uh, will be the Reverend Gregory Lucy of the Society of Jesus president of the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities, who will offer a greeting on behalf of our sister Jesuit colleges and universities. Father Lucy. When you get skipped, you get more attention. Father Quinn, I bring you greetings from the 27 sister schools of the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities. It is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to participate in this magnificent event, celebrating the beginning of the leadership of Father Kevin Quinn here at the University of Scranton and also celebrating the long and distinguished Jesuit tradition 
of pride, passion, and promise here at the University of Scranton. At milestone events like this, we wisely ask ourselves where we are and what we have become so that we might suggest whither we would have our new leader take us. In the wake of Vatican II, we struggled personally and institutionally to recreate ourselves, to rediscover the meaning of our lives and of our mission. I believe we have arrived at a new place. We are at a new moment in history. We are no longer apologetic about our religious traditions, but have once again discovered that our religious identity and the experience of it is at the heart of our mission as universities, enriching and strengthening us, giving a new level of vitality and meaning to who we are as men and women of faith in service. We are Jesuit and Catholic, but we are Jesuit in a new way. For we have formed Ignatian partnerships within our rich diversity. We are Scranton, yes but we recognize that our identity as Jesuit in this new way is an identity we share with the network of 28 colleges and universities and the nearly 200 Jesuit educational ministries worldwide. Our greeting to you, Father Quinn, is simply this. Call us today and every day to be who we say we are and continue to reimagine and recreate who we are becoming that we might be of greater service in Scranton and across the world. Thank you. Thank you, Father Lucy, and I assure you from now on you have my full attention. <laughs> Our next presenter will be Ms. Samantha Mosca, class of 2012 and vice president of student government. She will offer a greeting on behalf of all of our students. Ms. Mosca. I stand before you to represent the student body in welcoming Father Quinn to the University of Scranton. Not only do I take pride in this university, but also I find that as a senior, Scranton has become more than just a school. It has become a home. When trying to create an outline of my speech to welcome Father Quinn, I knew it needed to reflect how the students feel. I believe collectively our community of scholars would agree that Scranton is our home. Frederick Robertson once wrote, a home is the one place in this entire world where hearts are sure of each other. It is a place of confidence. The university has given its students just that. Our school is un unlike any other because it is based around our sense of community. We take pride in this community by acting and building on our ideas each year. In saying this, I am confident that everyone has noticed the various changes happening within our school. These changes, which Father Quinn will continue, will assist in improving our Scranton experience. Beginning by enrolling our largest and most diverse incoming class this university has seen, what better way to keep the expansion going than to have a new president who shares in the vision to broaden our community? I mean it literally. It seems that every day I wake up there is a new building being built, bigger than the one next to it. 
It is comments like this that not only a true Scranton student would understand, but even laugh at. This is what makes us sure of Scranton. I thought it would be appropriate to share that Father Quinn was completely in awe with how we not only welcomed him, but his, his entire family as well. His family was asked to be a part of our community. Although I'm sure that the day you moved in, you did not have 100 purple people carrying in your stuff and hugging your entire family. Maybe you did, I wouldn't be surprised. But the point is, only Scranton would create such a comfortable and personable environment, and we thank you and your family for coming to be a part of it. While preparing for this, I learned about Father Quinn's background and found out that he was involved himself in a wide variety of jobs in a variety of places. As the president of our university, the student body will look to him to be a model for us all. I can safely say that Father Quinn is more than qualified. He is someone with dreams and goals, and his role is to help us realize our own dreams and attain our own goals. With a background as a professor at law, of law at Georgetown, spending the last five years at Santa Clara University in California, as once, the, as once holding the role of an athletic director at Regis High School in New York, Father Quinn is a well-rounded human being. However, he may have to adjust from the sun in California to the constant rain cloud that covers Scranton, which is no easy task. But we are all called here at the University of Scranton to be well-rounded people, and it is a great pleasure to know our new president, too, has played many roles. However, I must add, we do have our differences with pre preference to sports teams. Being from Philadelphia, I am not too fond of a Yankees fan heading our school, but I am sure you will find a crowd of students here at Scranton who will be, accept that quality of value. While trying to put that aside, myself along with my other fellow student body, we could not be more excited for you to join our community, our family. A home is a place where it feels right to walk around without your shoes. So I hope that one day you too will call Scranton home and be able to take off your shoes, run around the Dion, and feel confident that we, the University of Scranton, are sure you fit your role perfectly as our new president. Welcome to your new home, Father Quinn. Thank you, Ms. Mosca. Mrs. Franny Mancuso, the class of 1993 and director of our conference and event services, will offer a greeting on behalf of the staff. Mrs. Mancuso. Father Quinn, it is with great pride that we bring you greetings from the staff at the University of Scranton. Each day, from North Webster to Adams Avenue, from Vine Street to Ridge Row, we create a whirlwind of activity that is all motivated by the Magus, our restless desire for excellence grounded in gratitude. Whether we spend our days beautifying our campus or keeping it safe, working with current students or looking for future students, taking care of finances or taking minutes at meetings, we respect the important role each of us plays and collectively celebrate our service we offer to this great university. We welcome you to a community dedicated to service both on and off campus. At the end of the workday, you can find us moderating student clubs, coaching Little League teams, and attending PTA meetings. We are active in civic organizations and volunteer in our communities because our dedication to the university's mission reaches beyond the boundaries of campus. On a brisk December day, the trustees announced that you would become our 25th president. One of your first observations about what attracted you to Scranton was its people. Our care for one another and our sense of community excited you. Hearing those words was enough for us to know that this university that we love so much was in good hands. As we look to the future of Jesuit higher education, we are excited to have you as our leader and look forward to the journey that lies ahead. On that journey, you can trust that members of the staff will continue to work together as a team to uphold the traditions of this Catholic Jesuit university. Pope John Paul II once said, a community needs a soul if it is going to become a true home for human beings. You, the people, must give it this soul. 
The heart and soul of this university lies within all of us. On behalf of the staff of the University of Scranton, I welcome you, Father Quinn, to your new home. Thank you, Mrs. Mancuso. And now for our final greeter, I welcome Dr. Lori Brooke, Associate Professor of Counseling and Human Services, who will offer a greeting on behalf of the faculty. Dr. Brooke. Father Quinn, it is my privilege and honor to provide the faculty greeting to you on this joyous day in the history of the University of Scranton. You'll note that the inspiration for my remarks are rooted in our alma mater, written by Father Edward Gannon of the Society of Jesus and Kathleen Fisher, class of 1980. Father Quinn, I believe that Fathers Byron, Panuska, McShane, and Pilars would agree that when you're leading the University of Scranton, the hours too quickly slip away. To our past presidents who are here with us today, a special thank you from the faculty for all you have done and for leaving the best of your work here in Scranton for us to continue as the coming years unfold. Father Quinn, we have appreciated your presence on campus in these first few months as our new president. In this short time, you have wisely gathered groups of administrators, faculty, staff, and students to come together to listen to our hopes and dreams for the coming years. With this simple gesture, you have opened the lines of communication and our hope is that this approach to leadership will be one of the many hallmarks of your presidency. As faculty, your faculty, we are committed to excellence in teaching. We are experts in our various disciplines. And in the Jesuit tradition, we strive to know our students, their life histories, to know their dreams and their struggles, to instill hope and faith and love for learning that goes far beyond the classroom. As faculty, we are committed to service, service that knows no boundaries and yet is rooted in our local Scranton community. Through our service, we are able to engage our students to know the meaning of what they are studying and the power of this knowledge to transform lives and communities. We applaud the celebration of service that was an integral part of these inaugural events. As faculty, we are committed to research. The scope of our work is recognized globally. We are collaborative by nature. Our work is often interdisciplinary, and we love to include our students. Father Quinn, I believe you will find the faculty to be diverse in our backgrounds, interests, thoughts and opinions, but one thing you'll find that unites us is our love for the University of Scranton, Jesuit education, our students and community. Today and always, our wish for you is that God be ever at your side and goodness fills your Scranton days. Father Quinn, on behalf of the faculty, it is with this deep love for the University of Scranton that we welcome you as our new leader and as the 25th president of this great institution. Thank you, Dr. Brooke. As Dr. Gordon has already made clear, we may not give it credit, but we do highly value music and the arts at our university. And we have been greatly blessed with the commitment of a variety of people from within and without. The University of Scranton Concert Band and Choir will now present a world premiere performance of Rejoice in the Lord Always a piece by Lawrence Wolf commissioned for today's inauguration. 
Mr. Wolf is conducting his piece with our group, and I welcome him to our campus. Mr. Wolf.
Thank you, Mr. Wolf, and thank you to the band and the choir. I would say, Father Quinn, if today and this week the quality of music is of any, is of any predictive value for your next few years, you're in great shape. The very Reverend James Shea of the Society of Jesus, provincial of the Maryland province, will conduct the formal missioning of Father Quinn in his work as president. Father Shea will be introduced by the Reverend Thomas Roach of the Society of Jesus, who is the rector of the Scranton Jesuit community. Father Roach. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me to introduce a man who in the course of his 47 years in the Society of Jesus has served in many different ways. He has been a counselor, educator, and pastor, and he is currently the leader of the Maryland province. As provincial, he continues to demonstrate the leadership and the pastoral skills that have been the hallmark of his career. His current position requires him to support the 330 priests, brothers, and scholastics of the Maryland province. Since 2008, he has handled this role with care and grace. Please join me in welcoming to the podium the provincial of the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus, the very Reverend James M. Shea. Thank you, Father Roach, uh, Bishop Embera, Father Quinn, members of the University of Scranton, family and friends. I'm happy to be with you today representing the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus as Provincial Superior. I come as a friend of the University of Scranton to bring warm greetings on this happy occasion. And I also come in an official capacity as I entrust to Father Quinn, the leadership of the mission that the Society of Jesus has carried out here since the arrival of Father Nevels and his Jesuit brothers in 1942. In the official language of the Society of Jesus, we speak of the University of Scranton as a Jesuit work. The university is inspired by the Ignatian charism of seeking God in all things, of promoting a faith that does justice, of interreligious dialogue and creative engagement with culture. But further, as a Jesuit work, the university also has a clear and definitive relationship with the Society of Jesus and is ultimately accountable to the superior general of the society through appropriate lines of authority. Father Quinn, you assume this responsibility at a, at a challenging time in the history of the church, of our country, and of the Jesuits' mission of higher education. For Pope Benedict has called on Jesuit higher education to address the frontiers of faith and human knowledge, faith and science, depth of learning, and promotion of justice. In similar fashion, Father General Adolfo Nicolas has encouraged leaders of Jesuit higher education around the world to lead their institutions to greater depth, to universal vision, and to learned ministry. The Society of Jesus entrusts you today with a serious and important mission. Of course, you do not bear this responsibility alone. The 35th General Congregation of the Society speaks of collaboration with lay colleagues as at the very heart of our mission. Last May, in a formal memorandum of understanding, the Maryland province, the Scranton Jesuit community, and the University of Scranton Board of Trustees pledge their shared responsibility and commitment 
for the Catholic and Jesuit mission of this fine university. And in fact, the entire Scranton University family gathered here shares with you this privilege and responsibility to guard and enhance our mission. So I charge you, Father Quinn, as university president and director of this Jesuit work, to shepherd well the society's apostolate, to remember always the society's commitment to the service of faith, faith and the promotion of justice, and to sustain and enhance the Catholic and Jesuit identity of this university. I entrust to you, therefore, Father Quinn, the presidency of the University of Scranton. May God bless you abundantly in your new mission. At this time in the program, Father Quinn will be entrusted with the various symbols of the office. I ask Father Quinn to please rise and come to the center of the stage. Dr. Karen Pennington, class of 1976, graduate school class of 1983, and a member of the Board of Trustees, will entrust the charter of the university to Father Quinn. Thank you, Dr. Pennington. Mrs. Paula Barrett, class of 1981 and a member of the Board of Trustees, will invest Father Quinn with the Presidential Medallion. Thank you, Mrs. Barrett. The Reverend Scott R. Pilars of the Society of Jesus, the 24th president of the University of Scranton and current president of Marquette University, will present the mace. All right, thank you, Father Pilars. At this time, Mr. Christopher Kip Condren, class of 1970 and chair of the Board of Trustees, will introduce the 25th president of the University of Scranton, Mr. Condren. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor for me to stand before you today in this very important day in the history of the University of Scranton. It's my distinct privilege to present to you an accomplished administrator, a distinguished teacher, and a recognized scholar with a deep commitment to the Jesuit and Catholic faith that we all subscribe to here at the University. So today, I present to you, Father Quinn, Father Break a Leg. Inaugural speeches are a very peculiar genre. They are, by definition, pronouncements by individuals who don't yet know what they are talking about. <laughs> or we might more charitably dub them expressions of hope unchastened by the roll or rod of experience. So says Drew Faust president of Harvard. 
These are sobering words not to be taken lightly. Might I respond to her words by first waving at you <laughs> in some vaguely presidential way to acknowledge your warm applause and then promptly sitting down? <laughs> but that's not what this ritual presumes, as the gifted organizers of these ceremonies have often reminded me. Nor would that move likely sit well with our University Board of Trustees. Yet, let's be clear about one point. Today, we celebrate the University of Scranton with this festal gathering, marking a dramatic intersection of the past with the future, of our traditions and accomplishments with our hopes and aspirations. This is why we are here. So I stand before you this day honored by the trust of the university community, grateful to the Board of Trustees for its confidence, and inspired by my mission as the University of Scranton's 25th president. Your presence humbles me, and I am touched by the greetings from faculty, staff, students, alumni, our sister Jesuit institutions, and the community of higher education in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I note the very welcome presence of our bishop, the Most Reverend Joseph Bambara, of the provincial of the Maryland province of the Society of Jesus, the very Reverend James Shea, of Rabbi Joe Mendelson, and of representatives of other faith communities. I am also grateful to our honorable mayor and state senator who have come to welcome their new neighbor. I thank God for the presence here of my family, especially my mom, Pat. She has insisted for the last six months, as only a mother could, that my new job required a new black suit, <laughs> and possibly more than one. Guess what I was scrambling to do last week. Absent in mind, though very present in spirit, is my dad, also Pat, who died three years ago. I am sure that he is celebrating in paradise with his brothers, John and Tom, as proud Irishmen would do. Finally, permit me a shout out to numerous members of the Daly, Quinn, and O'Grady tribes, family friends from Long Island, personal friends and colleagues from every stage of my life, and my brother Jesuits, some of whom have traveled great distances they would never forgive me. As I was preparing this speech, a number of inaugural veterans proffered much free advice. Be profound, humorous, and insightful. Literate, inclusive, and inspirational. Respectful, aspirational, and above all, brief. <laughs> to all, thanks for your very encouraging words. What I will do is offer my vision for the University of Scranton, a vision by definition that is provisional and open to revision. I take as my starting point the question, what does it mean to say that Scranton is a 21st century Jesuit university in North America? Allow me to name one presupposition before I begin. These are challenging times in higher education. Issues such as cost, quality, access, and accountability provide easy targets for both academic heavyweights and media talking heads. The academy may be adrift, as some notable commentators lament. But these are also times of extraordinary opportunity to reimagine the mission of the university or in the words of Adolfo Nicolás, Superior General of the Society of Jesus, to re-found the universities of the society. For Nicolás's predecessor, Peter Hans Kovenbach, Jesuit higher education rests on two fundamental principles. The first is that all inquiry can serve to deepen faith and that faith by nature demands understanding. 
Faith and understanding are intrinsically connected. Religion and secular intellectual culture need to be open to one another's insights. Religion and culture raise important questions and need each other to understand and to answer them fully. The second principle, equally important, is that love of God that does not include love of neighbor is a pious fraud. Thus, we must ask ourselves whether our students deepen their sense of wonder and curiosity, cultivate their ideals, widen their understanding of human life and their sympathy for others. Does the education we offer enable them to learn how best to ordain their lives to what is best for themselves and good for other men and women? In a Jesuit institution of higher education, the knowledge gained through inquiry brings with it the responsibility of acting justly for the common good. But the ethical ideal proposed by our schools should be of a higher level than that of liberal education. We and our students should continue to be asking ourselves if the choices we are making are leading us to the ideal of service as proposed by the gospel. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. As we have heard, the University of Scranton is animated by the vision of St. Ignatius of Loyola and his first companions. The Society of Jesus is over 460 years old and continues to educate young men and women in the spirit of Ignatius. One of the key phrases capturing the charism of Ignatian spirituality is to love and serve in all things. In Ignatius' Spanish, it reads, en todo amar y servir. How did Ignatius understand service, and how might we follow his lead? I turn to Jesuit David Fleming for his Ignatian ways of serving. He writes, first, by looking at God who is the first to serve, we begin to learn about service. Second, from God. We learn that love is the foundation, and love is the stimulus for service. Love is expressed in deeds, in acts of service, more than in words. And yet our service should speak out and communicate the love that is at its source. Third, service cannot be restricted to certain actions or deeds, to certain results or accomplishments. From Jesus and the Gospels, we learn that to follow is to serve, to be available is to serve, to believe and to trust is to serve, to accompany is to serve, to forgive and to be compassionate is to serve, and to celebrate the Eucharist is to serve. We also learn to serve is always to share what we have been given. That is why serving always follows upon loving because lovers share their gifts. Here lies the key to Jesuit education in the 21st century. What universities claim to be teaching their students specifically to think critically, reason analytically, solve problems, and communicate clearly is necessary but not sufficient for Jesuit universities. For a Jesuit university should ask more of its students by challenging them to make Ignatius's charge, his notion of service, their own. This is the value added of Jesuit education and is why we kicked off the inauguration last Friday with a celebration of service. Over 750 students, staff, and faculty volunteering in 20 social service agencies around town. This shows that we are already serious about service at Scranton. And as economists remind us, value-added features give competitive ed edges to institutions which otherwise, more, which otherwise might be more expensive products. But one might ask how a Jesuit university is to achieve this ultimate learning outcome. What I would like to do here is to propose one way of proceeding by outlining an education 
a distinctively Jesuit education that is engaged, integrated, and global. Jesuit education has engaged mind, heart, and hands since the 16th century when St. Ignatius founder, founded the Society of Jesus. In the year 2000, Father Kolvenbach, then Superior General of the Jesuit Order, called for a new Jesuit educational standard. Tomorrow's whole person, he said, cannot be whole without an educated awareness of, science, of society and culture with which to contribute socially, generously in the real world. For that reason, he explained, students must let the gritty reality of this world into their lives so they can learn to feel it, think about it critically, respond to its suffering, and engage it constructively. They should learn, he said, to perceive, think, judge, choose, and act for the rights of others, especially the disadvantaged and the oppressed. This is the contemporary standard for engaged learning in a Jesuit university. To apply these Jesuit marching orders, students should be encouraged to enter worlds beyond Scranton, to gain an education that no classroom alone can offer, to learn with and from people in marginalized communities, and so to become global citizens for the new century. This educational strategy calls for a personal transformation that would lead to transforming society. The ideal of personal transformation requires a rigorous education to prepare students to become ethical and compassionate leaders who will infuse society with faith and justice informed by knowledge. For personal transformation to be effective, academic moral and spiritual experience must be integrated with and enhanced by learning outside the classroom. But it must be experiential learning in which immersion and reflection on experience are intertwined and focused on the needs and concerns that many in our world face. But there is a catch here, a shift in educational philosophy. It is not just serving others and learning about people, but learning with and from people who are often excluded from participation in economic, social, and political life. And further, it integrates inquiry, creative imagination, and reflection on experience that inspires fashioning a more just and humane society. Through these experiences, faculty, students, community partners, and indigenous peoples become dynamic partners. In sum, the 21st century Jesuit University should be committed to a pedagogy of active, collaborative, transforming, transformative learning about social justice as an integral part of a liberal education. To be sure, the University of Scranton is well positioned to build bridges between the classroom and civic community, between Northeastern Pennsylvania and the world beyond. For the Scranton community already embraces the reality of global interconnectedness and views the city, the region, and the world as venues for our learning and research. One example, one among many, will suffice. All academic programs in our Pernuska College of Professional Studies require every student to do community-based learning. And our current strategic plan endorses expanding service opportunities for faculty, staff, and students. But much more needs to be done. To deliver a transformative education in the Jesuit tradition, as I mentioned earlier, requires the integration of academic, moral, and spiritual learning, the union of mind, heart, and soul. Education of the whole person in the Ignatian style helps students discover their vocation in life, above all, their vocation to love and serve. This project of self-discovery and discernment including discerning our deepest vocation, is a great challenge to all on our campus. For students, it causes great anxiety. For faculty and staff assisting students, self-doubt and caution often dictate. I speak here from personal experience. 
Aside from providing first-class training in Ignatian discernment, a Jesuit university must be a place where the Catholic tradition is studied and understood. The vast riches of the Catholic intellectual tradition is our privileged asset and our competitive edge. Keeping the faith is a no-brainer as we attempt to deliver a transformative education at the University of Scranton. This will require new and stronger collaboration between active, academic and student affairs, a tactic that our strategic plan already endorses. We may need to rethink our residential learning programs, our two optional programs for our first year students, core personalis and wellness programs, sufficient institutional commitments in helping our students integrate life and learning, or are additional models and new imaginative experiments still necessary? In promoting the holistic development of our students, we need to recognize what Father Nicholas labels the globalization of superficiality, superficiality of thought, visions, dreams, relationships, convictions. For him, new information and communication technologies are negatively shaping the interior lives of everyone, but especially our students. They have taken over every aspect of our daily lives, from commerce to leisure and even culture. Just think, emails, instant messaging, chat rooms and social networking websites such as Facebook and Twitter, Skype, iPhones, cellular phones, and similar applications. The challenge for uh, Jesuit higher education here is to promote in creative new ways the depth of thought and imagination that are distinguishing marks of the Ignatian tradition. To accomplish this may require us to imagine some of our organizational structures. But one thing is certain, not to realize the goal of educating the whole person in the Ignatian style would disappoint many, including myself. An inaugural address is not the time or place to unpack the concept of globalization, much less that very fashionable expression, globalizing world. For we all know that globalization is a widely used term that can be defined in a number of different ways, and there is little common ground between its opponents and opponents. Rather, my claim that Jesuit education should be a global education is a simple one. Call our students the global generation, and so we need to encourage them to think locally, regionally, nationally, internationally, and globally in whatever they study. Providing greater opportunity for international study, increasing diversity on campus, and expanding multicultural experiences for our community, three strategies already present in our current plan would help our students think globally. I end this speech by returning to my original question. What does it mean to say that Scranton is a 21st century Jesuit university in North America? My answer, the University of Scranton, a Jesuit university, can and should excel in providing its students an education that is engaged, integrated, and global. Faculty and staff, students and alumni, trustees and parents, friends and neighbors of Scranton, we can do something special here. Of that, I am very certain. Our university's tagline is pride, passion, promise. Experience our Jesuit tradition. The key word is our. We take our Jesuit mission and identity very seriously here in the city of Scranton. So let us go forth together from this place as the university's strategic plan demands to set the world on fire. And I might add, feeling the pride, experiencing the passion, and realizing the promise. God bless you all. God bless the University of Scranton, and thank you.
Well, thank you, Father Quinn, for a stirring vision and a clear challenge that I am assured the university will be happy to live up to. And we have our work. At this time, I'd like to ask Bishop Bambera uh, to return to the podium to offer the benediction. Please stand. Let us pray. O oh God, in every age and season, in every time and place, you sustain and care for your creation by raising up men and women in your own image, men and women filled with the wisdom to use well and wisely the gifts entrusted to their care. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of this university and for the educational experience that challenges growth in mind and spirit, an experience rooted in gospel values and the desire to build a world of justice and peace. We thank you for students and families, for educators and staff who give it life. And we thank you this day, O oh God, for the gift of your son and our brother Kevin. Sustain him in his ministry of service. Keep him steadfast in faith, generous in love, and mindful of your abiding presence in his life. All this we pray, O oh God, as we now humbly invoke your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you kindly and grant you peace. Amen. Please remain standing, but just a, a, a brief announcement. Immediately following our ceremony, you are all invited to lunch on the Dion Campus Green. Our royal ambassadors will direct you to the luncheon, uh, but please remain at your places while the stage party, the delegates, and the faculty make their recessional. So one final time, join us in some music and the singing of the University of Scranton's alma mater. <laughs> 